Before we start our, uh, <clears throat> our wrap and flap methods, I want to talk a little bit about what the RECP materials are. Uh, you all know what coir is. Coir is coconut. There's different kinds of coconut. All the coconut fabrics come from the husk of the coconut, but the, the type of coir, the type of coconut, how it's treated, how it's woven has different qualities. And so uh, some have better qualities than the other. Uh, we can also talk about, besides uh, coir netting, we can talk about erosion control blankets, ECBs. Okay, this is an acronym driven industry. So uh, ECBs. Now ECBs, erosion control blankets, can be temporary or permanent. Permanent meaning they're made out of usually polypropylene. Polypropylene like geogrid, black polypropylene. It's not plastic, it's not nylon, it's polypropylene. It has its own characteristics. And it usually then has a biodegradable filler. That can be straw, you're familiar with straw, straw coconut, straw coconut blends. There's blankets made out of other things now. And then uh, there's some that are made out of biodegradable material only, but those are not as durable or as, uh, as strong. But then we have another group of, of fabrics, of geotextiles, that are called turf reinforcement mats, which are in fact erosion control blankets that are designed for the tractive force of flowing water, the force of the water flowing across them. So they are stronger, they have more tensile strength, and they're usually longer lasting, more durable. So that category would be turf reinforcement mats. And, and then uh, our last, uh, our last one that we're talking about geogrid is the polymeric or the geogrids, which would be these polypropylene uh, products here. A little bit more about the coir netting, I want to talk about that because you'll see it specified an awful lot. As I mentioned uh, on, on, on Devil's Slide, for instance, and the coir netting that went inside of the McAfee reinforced wire baskets, was a 400 gram per meter coir. It had a very large opening, about a two inch opening size, but that coir, that coconut, 400 grams per meter squared, uh, only has a longevity of about two to three years, and it doesn't have as much tensile strength. Now, don't confuse this with jute netting. Jute netting is not made out of coir, it's made out of jute. Jute lasts six months. You're not gonna get any more than six months out of burlap or jute or the hemp type burlap is actually jute and hemp mixed together. So you're going to get six months out of that. At least you're going to get two to three years out of coir and that's going to be much stronger. So don't confuse the two. The next uh, level of coir netting is called the 700. It's 700 grams per square meter. So it's a little stronger. It has an opening about uh, three quarters of an inch, maybe five eighths of an inch size opening on it. It's intermediate strength. I do have the tensile strength on it, but I, I can't remember it right now. Uh, and it lasts about two to five years. And then the strongest one is the 900. That's the one we use for our soil wraps, soil flaps. It's about the only one, by the way, that we can use in channels when Fish and Game gets concerned about using plastics in channels. The only channel liner I know of that's pure biodegradable is the 900. Coir. You can use other erosion control blankets, but this is the one that's going to withstand the, the tractive forces. So that's kind of a summary of the, uh, of the coir nettings. The 700 and 900 thing, the take home message is you need to hydro mulch or hydro seed before you lay those down. And the 400 is one that you can actually come back later as long as you specify that the hydro seeder tries to shoot it directly into the opening. So now, uh, let's take a look at our uh, RECP wrap. We've got our spec sheet right here. Let's take a look at what our spec sheet has to say. This is the one we're gonna add to our toolbox. This, uh, the definition of it is a technique that wraps the slope backfill material with a rolled erosion control product. And it provides re resistance to soil erosion and also the hydrostatic pressure that builds up in the slope. It's actually an ability to push back and resist that pressure. 
And then of course it covers the slope so it resists raindrop impact. So you get, you get all, these, uh, all these big bangs for your buck. So uh, the benefits are it holds that soil in place. It can also then take care of some lack of compaction because the compaction we're trying to get cohesion and we're providing the cohesion or at least the mechanical forces to hold that soil in place. So sometimes if you can't get compaction, you can also look for the wrapping to do that. Uh, the soil, so the slope face is stabilized and protected. And then depending on the material that you use, and most of these RECPs are designed to encourage vegetation establishment. So they're gonna promote vegetative establishment and natural succession. Now there's some limitations to these things. The, it's very labor intensive. The drawings, if you look on the back of your uh, spec sheet, we've got a nice drawing that shows a nice one and a half linear, one and a half to one slope. It shows that the, the wrap came up and made a nice uh, acute angle right there and then it bent over and it made a very nice uniform slope. That in fact is very difficult if not impossible to actually construct it like that. When you actually stand up there, number one, you have to hold the soil in place. You say it's one and a half to one, it's beyond its angle of repose and, you, and you're working out into space and you can't really compact it very well and you go, okay, stay right there soil while I throw my seed down. Now I gotta reach the basket and I've gotta wrap this thing around and if a clod falls down, then you can't wrap it as tight as it looks here. And they're very difficult to build. So they're labor intensive to build. Uh, make sure that uh, it's probably unsuitable for embankments or fill slopes steeper than one and a half to one if you're going to use the RECP rolled at Rose Girl products. You start going steeper than one and a half to one, you should probably go to the wire baskets, wire and RECPs combined. Okay, and uh, if vegetation cannot be established, do not specify. And that's a very important consideration because these RECPs are degradable. And so what happens to the forces, the resisting forces, once this material breaks down? So ultimately we want the vegetation to take over the reinforcement role. So if you can't get vegetation to grow, then you better go to something more permanent like the wire baskets. And so it's really good for embankment fills at two to one to one and a half to one. It's most commonly used to construct one and a half to one embankment slope. So that's its general use. And especially now with the hydrologic soil groups A and B where we have a chance of seepage, you're going to need to counter those forces. And then you can also use this with many other of our uh, SSPs that are out there local topsoil and duff because you don't have to compact it. You can actually put that material on the face as just before you wrap it around. It'll help hold that material in place. You can use it with the compost blanket, certainly. You can use it with the hydro seeding and let's not forget hand seeding. Sometimes hydro seeding is not going to be practical. And you can also use this with brush layering. Brush layering is a perfect adjunct to this because as you big your lift up, you build your brush layering lay your geotextile, let it flap down, build your next lift, wrap it around, brush layering, geotextile, build your lift, wrap it around, brush layering. You have the best of all worlds with using this in conjunction with brush layering. This is a case study using a coconut composite RECP, TRM, on a landslide and county road in Santa Cruz County. They have many of these and they usually, the road crews usually repair these with a rock crib structure. But basically it's the same, same kind of thing. And so we went down and built this one and we started at the bottom, we put a rock toe down by the creek of course, and then started our first lift, flapped our wrap over, started our first lift up, wrapped our material around, brush layering, flap, lift, wrapped and so on, worked our way up. And you can see the material going down. Now we tried a bunch of things like a, uh, a, a retaining wall or a, 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 a 
boards in there to, to kind of build this thing again so we'd have a uniform face. And it was, it was all problematic. But we did, nonetheless, we got this project entirely built in four days. And the road workers said that it would have taken them five days to do a similar rock crib. So that was a good thing. And it was about two-thirds of the cost. So uh, that was a positive thing.